It's the semi-finals of my best restaurant competition. Britain's high streets are packed full of wonderful restaurants, but with so much competition out there, how do you spot the difference between a good restaurant and a great one? Tonight, we'll find out. Earlier this year, I asked you to nominate your favorite restaurants, and you bombarded me with thousands of nominations. My team and I chose the best restaurants and put them through their paces. Now, the winners of eight heats are going to battle it out for a place in the final. It's going to be a tough competition with four brilliant restaurants fighting for a place in the final. My best Spanish, Fino. My best Chinese, Yu and Yu from Blackburn. My best Italian, Casimir from Bristol. And my best Thai restaurant, Nam Jim from St Andrews. Only one of these four amazing restaurants will go through to the final. And there's a surprise in store. I'm going to kick two of them out right now. It's sudden death elimination. To be in with a chance of becoming my best restaurant, all my semi-finalists will need to be faultless. You've got to take criticism seriously. I want to know if they've corrected the problems I identified earlier in the competition. It needed more seasoning. To help me find out, I've sent back in my team of secret diners. Two of these restaurants will be leaving the competition immediately. First to risk the chop is my best Italian, Casimir from Bristol. Brothers John, Ray and Peter are young and ambitious and produce delicious food. But earlier in the competition, I discovered that some of the avant-garde dishes were confusing diners. Is the fish meant to be cooked like this? It's a bit of a strange consistency. It is. I sent in a new secret diner, food expert Rob Allison, to find out if the boys are reined in their wild experimentation. These guys definitely understand flavours. I absolutely totally understand it. In Star Anita, I've never thought of it working with olives. I've never even imagined it before. It works deliciously. Every time these boys create a dish, there's huge jeopardy. Olives with Star Anita doesn't sound like a perfect combination, but yet again, they've pulled it off. Next, roast lamb sous vide with kidneys and pine nuts. The lamb is delicious. The best end and the kidney. Um, it all works. So well with pine nuts. But what about the addition of vacuum-packed cucumber to the dish? I'm not too sure. Yeah, weird. I think it's weird. Damn, just when you think you're taking off it. It crash lands. They seem so pent up with being at the cutting edge on the edge of all the innovations that go on in food that they've actually forgotten that what they're actually serving is to be eaten and it's to be enjoyed and it's not to be dissected in some sort of biological experiment. Much of the food at Casimir is magical, but some of the dishes are still misfiring. It sounds really negative and it sounds like, yeah, we, we could be possibly going home. There's, that's the way it looks. Next to face the video evidence is Chinese winner Yu and Yu from Blackburn in Lancashire. Father Charlie and his son, head chef Victor, were overjoyed to win their heat. Yu and Yu. Oh. But I had concerns they were heavily overstaffed. We're we having a beauty pageant in here. Look at all these waitresses in here. Blackburn's next top model. It's an issue that needs to be addressed. Quite a lot of staff. It's not really that busy, is it? No. I think the problem is when you get a lot of staff and the restaurant's not very busy, it's more interesting kind of standing having a gossip and actually looking after the customers. With you and you, that was my one big concern. What's the point of having all those staff when they're not looking after customers? Seems to be a different person that comes. I don't know if someone's responsible for chopsticks and somebody is responsible for clearing. Generally, get one one waiter, one waitress or waiter. It's not the way to have a warm service. You don't make customers feel relaxed every time something hits the table. It's a new waitress. I'm looking for the best restaurant on a daily basis, with the best food and the best service, and I want to see restaurants get better. Despite the setback. I'm pleased to see you and you are still serving up wonderful food. Nice, nice crunchy apple. I thought the apple would be a little bit softer, but it's nice and crunchy. And the batter's actually really light. It tastes really nice. That's a real strong element with you and you. They are constantly pushing the boundaries out and they're trying to reinvent Chinese cuisine, but with a 21st century approach. Nice. Nam Jim was my champion Thai from St Andrews in Scotland. 
It's a great restaurant, but my undercover cameras discovered really surprising problems with service. What? That ranks as about the most aggressive service I've ever seen in my life. Will my new secret diner get better treatment? You know, the beef panang curry, you don't do it like a chicken or a, a prawn version of that, do you? You can do it, yes. You can do it? Yeah, oh, chicken lovely. or prawn, yes. Could I have prawn? Prawn, yes. yes. Great flexibility from the dining room staff. Um, she didn't want the chicken or the beef curry. She wanted prawns, and so they did it. It wasn't even on the menu. The service is miles better. What about the food? When I went there, I discovered that some of the dishes were slow in leaving the kitchen. It's not hot. The sauce isn't hot, and the, um, the rice isn't very warm either. It should be really hot when it comes to the table. Damn. Food not piping hot. It was always a concern. If food hangs on the hot plate, it shouldn't sit there. As it sits there, the goodness is disappearing, but more importantly, the food's getting cold. My best Spanish, Fino, is the final restaurant to stay elimination in the face. They barely put a foot wrong in their heat. Head chef Neves produces authentic Spanish food that has impressed everyone. My undercover critic Simon Davis is there to see if they've kept their standards up. Ah, is that the prawn croquetas? Yeah, incredible. My secret diner is blown away. But listen to the atmosphere in the background. You know, it's buzzing, and uh, you can't buy that atmosphere. Really good start. But in his main course, my secret diner detects signs of over-seasoning. <laughs> um, first bit of negative feedback for my secret diner. Slightly clumsy on the seasoning. What a shame. I've told all four restaurants to expect my call. They know that I'm looking for perfection, but only two will survive this stage. It's the moment of truth. I am nervous. Whether we've done enough, I can't. You know, I can't answer that. Let's hope so. May I speak to Sam, please? How are you? Sam, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not bad, thanks. Not bad. Hi. Um, is that Victor? It is, yes. How do you feel? Uh, nervous. Unfortunately, um, the couple of dishes were slightly heavy-handed with the seasoning. I'm deeply concerned about all those staff. I want to see restaurants get better and climb across this competition. And you and you. It's not going to the next stage of this competition. All right. I'm really sorry. We didn't get through. That's all right. We do our best. S staffing is really my area, and um, I think we lost lost it to go through to the next round because of that. All right. That's all. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I just I think let your family do. Sorry. Good standard. Victoria, you only do your best now. Yeah. Sam, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, I have to eliminate two restaurants from this competition. And it's about to get even harder for Fino. Because you're through to the next stage of this competition. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh, it's good. Um, my legs are shaking now. It's always good. It's a, it's a good sign. It's a good sign. One restaurant is out, and one has survived my sudden death elimination. Now, I have to make one more very tough call. Just very nervous, I think. You wouldn't be right minded if you wasn't actually nervous about this situation. To go out at this stage would be very upsetting. <laughs> Next. Hello. Who will I pick to join Fino to fight for a place in the final? And whoever goes through will face intense scrutiny. The ultimate flying visit from me and two mystery diners.
It's the first semi-final of my nationwide restaurant competition. Spanish heat winners Fino have survived my secret dining elimination. Now it's down to my best Thai, Nam Jim, and my top Italian, Casimir. One of them is about to be knocked out. Hello? Hi, is that John Ray? Yes, it is. Hello, Gordon. Unfortunately, I have to... Eliminate two restaurants in this competition. You know this competition is about searching Britain for the best restaurant. And I fell in love with Nam Jim from the first minute I walked in there. Oh, thank you. Whatever happens, after this phone call, you've got to continue. For Nam Jim... It's been an amazing journey. Today... ..is where it comes to an end. All right, OK. Thanks, darling. Bye. <sighs> Jesus. Look, listen, I'm very, very proud of everyone. Yeah, they did well, so... Yeah. Yeah. The competition is getting harder. And Casimir, congratulations. Oh, you. You're through to the next stage of competition. Oh, no, no, seriously, yeah, I'm really... Yeah. Honestly, man, we're over the moon. The more it sinks in, yeah, we feel fantastic. And, uh, yeah, it's just brilliant to feel appreciated and given a chance to keep going. So, two brilliant restaurants remain in the first semi-final, and I'm going to pitch them both in a head-to-head -head battle. First, I have a surprise in store. to drop in unexpectedly for a meal on avant-garde family-run Italian restaurant Casimir from Bristol and modern Spanish tapas restaurant Fino from London. To help me decide who will make it to the final, I've enlisted two trusted lieutenants for a second opinion on strengths and weaknesses of these two restaurants. Together, table 90, menu prestige, foie gras. Angela Hartnett, one of the most successful British chefs of the last 15 years. Service. And Simon Davis, one of my secret diners, an expert in putting restaurants through their paces. They know the restaurant business inside out. I trust their opinions implicitly. The Casimir boys, two very talented young individuals. Beware, it's not your classic local Italian eatery. Let's go and catch them off guard. Yeah, yeah. totally. The first time I visited Casimir, I found their cooking to be new and exciting. But I discovered young chefs John Ray and Peter sometimes push things too far and their experimental dishes can be hit and miss. If you're trying to be avant-garde, you've got to go with your customers. You've got to take every customer forward. Their parents, Susan and Paco, sank their life savings into the restaurant. But it's their sons who call all the shots and cook exactly what they want, whether the customer likes it or not. I want to find out what Angela and Simon think, so we've caught them on the hop. How are you? Very well. Welcome Good. to Casimir. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hi, guys. How are we? How are you doing? You're Very well, thank you. How are you both? You didn't expect us, did you? Angela Hartman, Simon Davies. Right. Look forward to seeing you after. Thank you. Casimir are fully booked. Expectations are high for top-notch food and service. It was still for you, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, please, thank you. Thank you. I think this is sparkling, my dear. Oh, yeah, it's just still water. Thank you. Don't apologise. Thank you. Very nervous. I've already made a few mistakes, <laughs> but, which I don't normally do, but I think that's just nerves, so... I know Casimir will be trying to impress me, but in a great restaurant, everyone should get special treatment. So I've asked my personal assistant and her partner to dine here as well, anonymously. I'll find out what they think later. In this restaurant, diners literally get what they're given Casimir's avant-garde nine-course tasting menu. For our fish course, we're having salmon-cooked sous vide in a water bath with cauliflower puree and a lemon emulsion. I mean, that's picturesque. That is ravishing, actually. Beautifully presented plate of food. Delicious. Really good. They have great finesse. Next, what the menu refers to as a traditional risotto. Thank you. But true to form, the boys have given it their unique twist, using barley instead of rice, and it's topped with cold yoghurt, not parmesan. I mean, traditional is the wrong word. You can't call well, that a traditional <laughs> risotto. The cold and the hot sensation, I found it just chilled the whole dish down. For me, it's very sweet again. Yeah, uh, yeah you still found mm. the sweet pasta. Thank you. Thank you, my love. Thank you. Absolutely. 
can't win everything, you know, and that's it. Um, there's a taste of menu, there's certain dishes that people won't like. Um, hopefully they like all of them and, you know, and some more than others, but uh, that's it, really. Next course is lamb, yet another dish cooked in a water bath. It'll have a spa. It'll have a spa bath. It's going for a bath. It's going for a bath. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of the sous vide method, but the real skill is understanding which dishes it suits. You guys will correct me if I'm wrong. That's where sous vide cooking falls down. Doesn't do it justice. Because no. that bloody well doesn't taste it very much. Because it's no. been essentially they look like so boiled. Rolled it all. It's like a boiled lamb stew as opposed yeah. to, you know, a cannon that warrants that sort of nutty, buttery, slightly gamey flavour. Yeah. Damn, what a shame. Finally, it's time for dessert. An unusual take on a traditional Italian pudding that starts with an introduction from the boys. Our earliest memory of good Italian cooking was the dessert tiramisu, given to us by our father in takeaway cartons. But you know what? The best bit here, it says sometimes the best really is that simple. Wow. Let's see. The way people make bad tiramisu is too much alcohol, it's too sweet. You've got to taste that espresso through mm -hmm. it. <laughs> Got the yeah, got it. That is exceptionally good. Mm. Very good. No, it is good. We've tasted some outstanding cuisine, but some dishes have fallen short. Technically, um, they're in a league of their own. Yeah. Stella, really stellar, and yeah. you know, really the top of their tree. But they need to cook for the punter. Yeah. Mm. At the moment, they're cooking for themselves. They're cooking for their parents, and they're cooking for their hero chefs. It's always difficult with a family restaurant, but here more than anywhere else. Chefs John Ray and Peter need a strong guiding hand, and their parents aren't providing it. I don't think they're giving the feedback. You can't as a parent, you can't no. be that brutal, you know, no. you can't be a manager and slap it down and no one likes this. Time to call the family together for a debrief. Here's what we saw. Uh, highs and lows, technically brilliant, without a shadow of doubt, but you need to rein it in. You need to rein it in and understand it from a customer's point of view, not your ambition. Because when the customers are happy, you're happy, you're in business customers of the power today. And for me, the secret behind any good experience is how everybody else feels in that dining room. And there's a second surprise tonight, because there's someone in that dining room that means a lot to me, because she organises my life. Jennifer, please, darling, and Michael, how was it? Overall, it was an absolutely fantastic experience. We were made to feel very special, and we really enjoyed our evening. And we thought the chefs were ingenious and talented. And I think at the end, the tiramisu, wonderful. 10 out of 10. Really, really good. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. My undercover diners enjoyed their meal, but I'm still concerned over Susan and Paco. Have they got it in them to run this restaurant with a firm hand? I love my mum and dad's bits. I've said that before. But, you know, me and Peter, there's no question about it. We're ambitious as hell. We want to be in the same league as Gordon Ramsay and Angela Harlan one day. We, I like to think we're almost there, but this makes me more determined to win this competition more than ever. After you. Thank you. As an overall experience, going out for dinner, yeah, it was, it was, it was good, but it can be great. I have to slow down and rein it in a bit. And if they can control their ambition and focus on their customers, they'll surprise themselves. Next, it's time to surprise Fino. What we can't afford to do, all three of us, is give them an easy ride. Turn the place upside down and really put them under pressure. Yeah. So far, this hugely successful Spanish tapas restaurant has powered through this competition. As we turn up unannounced, I hope they haven't let their high standards slip. How are you? Are you well? Good to see you. Like most lunchtime diners, we want to be in and out in just one hour. Hetchef Nieves and owner Samanedi will have to produce a perfect meal with speed and efficiency. It's going to be busy service, it's fully booked. So it's going to be quite exciting. We're going to dance in the kitchen. Today we're here for a lunch and we want to be treated like a normal customer, as you would do. In which case, the best thing for us is to Eddie and I to leave you in the hands of one of our normal waitresses and they can um, take it from there. Unknown to Fino, my PA Jennifer is also dining here. And once again, she'll offer a secret perspective on the restaurant's performance. Thank you. Thanks very much. I'm just sorry, is there a menu um, without being ripped, with a bit missing? Uh, it was all ripped, with a big hole in there. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, thank you. I think so. It's a bit page one, isn't it? Uh, not good. One of the first dishes to arrive is chipperonis, deep-fried baby squid. 
Excuse me. May I have a plate, please? <laughs> They're stumbling a bit, aren't they? They are. They do, but I tell you what, there is a way with ham with the salt out there. Quite a lot of salt. Over seasoning is once again a problem. Angela's keen to get to the root of the issue. They not season it before, or you just finish everything? No, with the season, the seasoning, but always I like to have a little bit more. Just a little bit extra. Because yeah. the only one thing is the chiprioni's we thought were a bit salty. Every dish that goes up on the pie, she puts extra salt and pepper on. Oh, really? Ah. And I said to her, okay. don't they finish it off themselves? She goes, oh, no, but I add a bit more each time. Wow. Which you don't need to. Without tasting it. it? Well, yeah, not tasting it. Doesn't yeah. make sense, you've got to trust your chefs. Your service? We've told the restaurant that we're on an hour's deadline, but the mains still take 40 minutes to arrive. Just just dip your finger in that. That's cold. Yeah. That's freezing. Oh. Damn, this shouldn't be cold. But the problem with the pork belly is not just the temperature. Is that all cardamom? It's all cardamom, yeah. And it's too strong. Wow. Far too many, aren't there? It's really overpowering. It's like going to the dentist for an anaesthetic. It oh, is. Crap. It's not their finest hour. No. With that one. We have to leave in just five minutes, and still no one's taken our dessert orders. We're running very tight of time. Could you recommend something quick? Free desserts, and um, what would you? I would recommend maybe the crema catalana, which is our speciality, uh, which is like a Spanish crema relais. We're out of time. We have to go. That's why I asked you to choose three quick desserts. No, do a second. Two seconds, please. I'd like the bill, and I'd like salmon eddy, please. Thank you so much. Damn. Shame. That's a shame. I have to be honest, uh, I'm disappointed, because it's nowhere near as good as it was last time round. There's a strand of over-seasoning food that is being cooked by the brigade and re-seasoned by the chef before it goes. What I'm more nervous about is the sloppy service. I think, I think what's interesting is look, yeah. looking, looking around the room yeah. is um, the tables who obviously weren't trying to test, to us, test us out. Yeah. The service, um, you know, because I've, I've seen with my own eyes, yeah. was, was good and the, and the quality of the food was good. Eddie's bold claim is about to be put to the test by my PA, Jennifer. How was lunch? We have some mixed feedback. We felt that the welcome needed work. The staff seemed preoccupied at the beginning and we felt a little abandoned. I thought that the stuffed courgette flour with the goat's cheese was a triumph. It looked pretty as a Picasso, and the taste was divine. However, towards the end, when the restaurant became extremely busy, unfortunately, the service tailed off, and we began to feel neglected. And in fact, our tea and coffee order was forgotten. Um, sorry to see that. said before we like to be the best we like to win and obviously it's, it's not a great day when when it when it goes wrong carpet suddenly been taken out from under our feet um, and that's not a, a good feeling my last experience here was near flawless and it was almost on the verge of perfection that was embarrassing next oh Paco they've made it this far but Fino and Casimir are about to go head to head in the ultimate food challenge you can cook without a fucking water bath. Let's get that yeah, right, yeah? It's a race against time. Yeah, we we're going to change, Gordon. And there's only one place in the final. We're in, there in real shit here. Great restaurants need to be flexible and constantly evolve to survive through these difficult times. So I want my semi-finalists, Casimir and Fino, to really prove to me they can create something extraordinary against all odds. They both now face one gruelling test for a place in the final, a challenge like they've never, ever experienced before. In just 12 hours, they must turn this bare shell into a thrilling, vibrant pop-up restaurant open for one night only. I want to see if my two semi-finalists can create an amazing one-off dining experience with a tight budget and a deadline. It's daybreak, and I've called both Fino and Casimir to meet me here in Islington, North London. Good morning. morning. It's early, right? And you're probably thinking, what in the hell am I doing here? And let's be honest, it doesn't look very glamorous, does it? No, four bare walls, bleak, yeah? Today, you're going to transform this boring, somewhat cold shell into the most amazing, unique pop-up restaurant. Forget your restaurant. Create something magical. Good luck. Thanks, Gordon. 
Pop-up restaurants are one of the hottest trends in the food world. They spring up in unexpected locations, cause a big storm, and then disappear overnight. There's the cash. Both restaurants will have a £2,000 budget to split between front of house for decor and the chefs for ingredients. Let's take 600 because I don't want to be in a chef. Good luck, guys. Now the shop. And he knows cook. They've only got until 7 p.m. to create their restaurant from scratch for up to 50 hungry diners who will expect nothing but the best. There's so many things we have to cook, we have to do, we have to prepare. It's going to be a really, really you know, new challenge. I'm taking the chefs to the markets, and I'll be really fascinated to see how this amazing produce gets their creative juices flowing, and they'll have to really think on their feet and adapt their menus based on what they find. First up, the butchers. Free range chicken fillets, guinea fowl, duck breast. What's going through your mind? Because you've got to start coming up, main course, one of them. What is it going to be? OK, you guys? Yeah. yeah I've got to get that locked down. Peter, we've got to think about this. For the next five goddamn minutes, it's sadly. Throughout this competition, Casimir have produced some amazing food, but some of it has been so experimental it has missed the mark. Will they be tempted to show off tonight, or will they rein it in for their diners? Right, I think it's going to cost you around about six pound a portion. But Peter and John Ray are tempted by real Rolls Royce ingredient: beef. They'd love to cook it sous vide with a fragile parfait served with popcorn. Fingers, we're not going to have water baths, are we? Uh, there's not been a water bath in sight. You can cook without a fucking water bath. Let's get that yeah, right, yeah? yeah? Quite yeah. easy. So you've got to come out of that frame for a minute and, and go back to the beginning. I want these boys to forget some of their wild experimentation. Tonight, can they cook something simple and perfect with no frills? What do we get for pork? <sighs> oh, this is the belly pork? Yeah. We, we're going to go for the belly pork. Nice. Fino's head chef, Nieves, cooks fantastic Spanish tapas and pork features heavily on their menu. But I want to see if she can go one step further and do something extraordinary for this one night only. You're very comfortable with pork, aren't you? We love, we love pork. Yeah, pork. and you do it as a main course, starter, or...? It's going to be as a main course. Because there are other cuts, you know, you've got the most amazing loin. I know, I know, but people love belly pork. Mm -hmm. We love it, you know, crispiness, well, tender. So we, hopefully, hopefully I'll get it right. So 14 of those. Decision made. Pork belly, a great cheap cut. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thanks. Is that the right thing to do, or is it not? But John Ray and Peter still can't decide between flashy beef or simple pork. Well, I know it's a big decision, mate. Yeah. It's going to be like this shit. And time is running out fast. Pork fillet roasted, slightly cure it, and then we pan for it. Let's do pork. Excuse me. We're going to change it. Change our change the decision. We're going to change it. Yeah, we change. We're going to change Gordon. We we'll go back to our old Casimir roots. Go to port. It's cheaper. It's got great flavour. We have to yeah. work it harder. That's we have to work flavours right. better. Okay. Our plan is to cure it, and then it'll be That's a little bit. So your decision. Yeah. Sorry to change your mind. No beef, pork. Where's the pork fillet? Ever since size, sir. Let's go. <sighs> Made a wide decision. Isn't it? I'm surprised Casimir have gone for pork too, but they've chosen a prime cut as well as a belly and I'll be fascinated to see what both restaurants do with it. One night only, let's see what they've given us. A successful restaurant isn't just about fabulous food. The front of house teams must race against the clock to bring their pop-up restaurants to life. It's more comfortable, it's cheaper. It's cheaper and nicer. They're working to a tight budget, and I want to see how creative they can be. I, I personally think that we ought to go no cloth. I think so. And wooden table. Sam and Eddie, helped by one of their managers, Kashka, are going for a simple Spanish feel. I mean, that's not bad, is it? No. I don't think the boys will be pleased with that. No, no, no. That's no, no. Helped by the restaurant manager, Anne, Susan and Paco are downstairs trying to choose crockery the boys will like. It's stressful, isn't it? There are real bargains to be had at 15 pence a plate, but they're scared it won't meet the boys' high expectations. I'm feeling very stressed. <laughs> I'm just worried we're not going to get it all done. Across London, I'm taking the chef to another of my favourite markets for fish. Right now, this is a dream come true for any chef because this produce is incredible. It's too much of a choice. Too much choice. Just trying to get the right, the right fish. Much. Doesn't get any better than this. Nervous is drawn to the delicious mackerel and wild sea bass. It's incredible. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> no, it's amazing. It's amazing. amazing. The wild sea bass is an irresistible ingredient for the young chefs from Casimir too. Excellent. Decision done. Good. Yeah, brilliant. Good. In Chelsea, Paco, Susan and Anne 
have decided to search for plates in a department store, but time is tight and they'll have just 40 minutes to get everything they need. Excuse me, could you tell me how much those are? For each? They're five pound each. Oh, my God. Do you do anything cheaper than these, or is yeah. this the cheapest? Here, the plates start from two pounds each, but Susan could have got similar back at base for just 15 pence. So if we could have 35 of these, 35 of these, 35 of those... It's a costly decision. Spending more money on plates here means they'll have less to spend on the look of the restaurant. OK, OK, let me think, let me think. Should we just put we some big candles there. around? We need some flowers as well. We need to get our We've got no money. We're in, there in real shed here. What are we going to put on the tables? Come on, guys, we're wasting too much. What are we going to put on the Come table? Come on, no, let's take these, then. We, we ain't got no choice. OK, so we can have different coloured ones. I know the boys are going to hate it, but they're cheaper and um, we need to have some ready. One more. So that's five of each. That's £469.40, so yes, please. One. Oh, no, they don't. They don't. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So, all right, come on. It's just. Yeah. You're a little bit stressed out, but that's what Gordon promised. Sweat and tears, isn't it? <laughs> Good luck, Gordon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, come on. We're going to enjoy this. I'm just tired and stressed, and I'm just worried about this evening. But I will get through okay, this. All yeah. Right? Yeah. It, may, it may not be the best decoration and the best <laughs> looking restaurant in the world, but the service and the food are going to be yeah. extraordinary. Okay? okay? So, yeah, I think, think focus on that, okay, Susie? Okay. Mm -hmm. well, let's on, go. Focus on that. It's midday. Just seven hours left for the teams to create their pop up restaurants. Back at base, they're taking the delivery of their furniture and crockery. Nice, it now looks like a Japanese restaurant. Yeah. Oh, Paco, we've had it now. Susan's um, out of depth. They need to understand a pop-up is a one-night-only mega experience, and this is it. Show off. Create those fireworks, because that's what's going to make your restaurant win this competition. Stop it. Let's just cut this shit now. Look, guys, we've only got three hours, right? Oh, fuck it. Who cares? We're going to do it. We're going to do it well. Come on, then. Come on, then. Upstairs, I get the sense that posh boy Sam and Eddie haven't been to Ikea before. And didn't realise that their eight natural wood tables come flat-packed. The first one was 20 minutes, the second one 15 minutes. It's going to take us an hour and a bit, uh, which is time we'd much rather be doing something else. And also, by the end of it, we're going to have blisters all over our hands, but never mind. <laughs> Downstairs, Paco and Susan are working on the finishing touches. I was expecting this morning, oh, how is this going to even look like a dining room? But we're getting there slowly. With no time to spare, Sam and Eddie finally master their flat-packed tables. Hey. I, I would give you a high-five, <laughs> but I don't think so. It is definitely different yeah. to our restaurant, but it still captures what we are about. The job. I need yeah. it. I'm pleased with what we've done with it. I'm, I, I, I can't believe that we've actually made this horrible room in looking somewhere where you looking can die. Looking much better. Yeah, we're there, just. We are there. It's, um, you know, it's been, it's been a close-run thing this afternoon, but we're sorted. It's 7 o'clock. Queues of hungry diners wait to be seated. This morning, I asked you to create, from scratch, two stunning restaurants, yeah? Four bare walls, two empty shelves, one kitchen. The pressure's on, guys. And in three hours' time, one restaurant's leaving this competition and one restaurant is going through to the final. They have just three hours to impress with a thrilling one-off dining experience. Excuse me, this is my, my brother Sam. Sam Hart. How are you? OK? Hi. Wonderful. I hope you haven't been waiting too long. <laughs> and that experience should start as soon as people walk in. And welcome to the pop-up restaurant. Sure. I've got two or three. Just here. Tomato and mozzarella salad. Tomato and mozzarella. Oh. OK, Casimir restaurant, check on table wow. four. You've got the first order in in five minutes. Well, Susan, you're feeling OK? 
<laughs> wow, and she's smiling. Nice one, Mum. Table one, all right? One suit, one mozzarella. I have to say, I'm impressed. I've had my doubts whether Mum Susan can run a restaurant with a firm hand. But tonight, she seems determined to prove me wrong. They've come together at the right time. And we know it's not how you start, it's how you finish, but great fucking start. Back, come on, back, keep back. this adrenaline rushing. <laughs> Casimir are already busy taking orders, leaving Fino playing catch up. The mackerel, please, followed by the belly. I'm going to have the shell mackerel. The mackerel to start with, thank you. Chicorn. But as their first orders reach the kitchen, already there's a problem. What the? What's that? What's he done? Fucking hell. Next. Service, please. It's the service of their lives. I know we don't have them in the menu yet, but can we do it? Let's just, let's just give it. Let's just fucking go for it. Only one will survive. The restaurant going through to the final is... It's the semi-finals of my nationwide restaurant competition, and it's Spain versus Italy. Fino from London and Casimir from Bristol. They've created pop-up restaurants from scratch, and at the end of tonight's service, I'll decide who goes through to the final. Casimir restaurant, check on table wow. four. Nice one, man. Great fucking start. But Fino's kitchen has ground to a halt. Hetjef Nieves can't decipher Samanetti's handwritten checks. What's that? What's he done? Sorry, I do apologize. Fino is struggling. I mean, they really are struggling, and um, they don't seem as gelled as they should be. Service, please. The Casamir boys have created two amazingly simple starters. On their menu, a delicious fresh tomato jam salad with mozzarella dusted in parmesan. Guys, I need to hear, like, you're fucking hanging off a cliff, shouting for your life. Service! S Service! Come on! Fantastic food, but served in a soup bowl. Yeah, I think the bowl is... Um, yeah, the bowl's quite difficult. It's tricky. This is really good, though. First taste of the food. Um, ladies, what did you have? Salad. Yeah. Salad. The mozzarella? It was very nice. Yeah. You would have served it in a bowl. You would have served it in a bowl. Yeah. Their second starter is a rustic Paris mushroom soup. Yeah. What table number is that? Uh, that is table five. So you've got more soup in there than they have in there. Same table. They have to be the exact same size. I'm watching everything. <laughs> Wow. No one ever gets mushroom soup right. That's yeah, I could have a bowl so of it. Good. Really, really good. And that was the best soup you ever best, tasted. Best mushroom. Because it was almost sort of foamy, like a mousse or something. Yeah. It was really creamy and just really delicious. But it's not to everyone's liking. No, I, might, I just think it's too cold. Do you want me to warm it up for you? Yeah, you just give me two seconds, I'll be straight back, yeah. OK? In the past, I found doting mum Susan usually leaps to her son's defence on any criticism of their food. Well, maybe one customer's complaining, you just like it a bit warmer. Mum, yeah, no problems. But tonight, it's great to see her treat her sons like chefs, not children. Okay. Just say yes straight away. Two minutes, OK? OK. Yeah. Thank you very much. You. Service? I love Fino's Spanish-infused starters. Succulent baby beetroot salad with walnuts and stilton and a spectacular mackerel dish with grapes and apple salad. The mackerel and the fish was beautifully cooked and the flavour of the grapes went really well with it. These dishes are Fino at their best. But under this intense pressure, Nervias needs to make sure every plate is perfect. I really want the taste of the plate that's been assigned, so I'm going to put my chelsea Girls, a little bit of feedback. One table I just uh, overhearing them, a little bit salty, they said, on the, on the start of the mackerel. What was it? The mackerel, a little bit. Mackerel. One table. So one hour in. Fino are falling behind. They got off to a really shit start. Not only that, but food's coming back, and the mackerel is salty, which is a common thread across Fino. We're going to pick up the speed. Uh, pick up the gear, pick up the standards, you know, but this will get better. Onto the mains, and Nieves is planning to knock the diner's socks off with the wonderful flavours of a Fino classic. Belly of pork with red wine sauce. Now, that pork looks fantastic. Nieves. It's good. It's lovely. It's cracking crispy. She's also cooking an amazing wild sea bass with squid wrapped in smoked pancetta. It's almost perfect. But with little else but fish on the plate, I worry it lacks balance and needs some garnish. It was absolutely delicious, but missing a bit of carb. <laughs> very potatoes. Yes. We don't have very potatoes in the menu. I know we don't have them in the menu, Nieves. What I'm trying to do to make her happy, she wants potatoes. Can we do it? Yes. If we can do them, chef, please. I think it'll sort out a, a situation, OK? My one concern with the bass was no starch on there. The rich sauce, the squid. It needs yeah. a start. You know, it needs something along those lines, but. 
We can boil potatoes. It takes six or seven minutes. I love the way Fino are doing everything they can to please their customers. Great, thank you. Six, six. Three Santiago's, one fig, please. These are like the most delicious potatoes. Two potatoes. <laughs> two potatoes. <laughs> two potatoes. <laughs> Pete, how long? Two bats, one pot. You said two minutes, two minutes ago. Uh, there'd be about five, uh, four minutes, yeah, five minutes. Let's just, I've let's got just it in the oven, mate. Let's, let's just fucking other. go for it. I've got it in the oven, man. Back in the kitchen, John Ray and Peter are also serving pork, but they're mixing belly with prime cut fillet topped with Italian garnishes. So there's Casimir. Really good. Quite sweet. The boys are also creating a fantastic Italian sea bass with cannellini beans. I love it because it's so simple. No wild avant-garde frills for this dish. Wow. You're going to enjoy that. This is really I had the sea bass from my main course. The skin was crispy, the, the fish was cooked perfectly. Table one, main course, back said that was the best piece of fish she's ever had in her life. Fino are finishing with a classic Spanish dessert, Santiago tart. Could this popular sweet be their winning touch? Oh, that's good. Yeah, and I'm not a dessert person. I thought the flavours of the almond was really lovely and the tart. Thank you. Ladies, it's me again. Yay! The good looking one. <laughs> For their dessert, John Ray and Peter are serving a modern Italian take on apple crumble with almond infused custard. But they've added a twist that's leaving some of my diners confused. The apple's kind of like lukewarm, but the rest of it is very cold. So I'm just not sure. <laughs> Be warm or cold? Slightly warm because it's uh, too hot, the flavor can be affected. Okay. Casimir's apple crumble is meant to be eaten warm, but it's leaving some customers cold. It was a bit standard, I'm afraid. The rest of the meal was amazing. The dessert did let it down a little bit. 10 p.m. and service is over. Tonight, the diners decided how much to pay. They loved both restaurants, so the takings were equal. But this challenge wasn't simply about money. Well done. Thanks, Chef. A tough 12 hours. It was a battle against time and pressure to create a thrilling dining experience for one night only. We've put our heart and soul into this evening. The kitchen have put their heart and soul into it. And I just think uh, we're going to win. But... I mean, I, I believe we had the edge today. To be in um, the final of, of Ramsay's Best Restaurant would be a culmination of, you know, kind of a, a lot of hard work. It'd be amazing. It'd be absolutely fantastic. Thanks, bye. I'm so happy because both restaurants seriously pushed the boat out. And the hard part for me right now is that I have to make a decision between those two restaurants. This has been one of the toughest challenges I've ever set. There were times that I honestly didn't think both restaurants were gonna make it. And I started to panic. And as the clock ticked away, the restaurants just started emerging coming individual restaurants with identity, character. The atmosphere in both restaurants, amazing. The food, stunning. And on the back of the last three hours, you've made it incredibly difficult for me to decide on which restaurant's going through to the final. That's what a pop-up restaurant is all about. A one-off, one-night-only, unique experience. And on the back of that performance, it's such a close call. Based on everything I've seen. These guys definitely understand flavors. Let's see how the cucumber goes with all this. Yeah, weird. Everything I've tasted. That's delicious. 
lovely. It's a proper Spanish dish. I mean, that's picturesque. Beautifully presented plate of food. Everything I've listened to. Cast me a restaurant. Check on table wow. four. Nice one, Mum. To make her happy, she wants the potatoes. Can we do it? Yes. If we can do them, Chef, please. The restaurant going through to the final. Is Casimir? Yes, 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 yes sir. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. You. you can smile. You can smile. You'll get you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done. <laughs> For us, it was a new, you know, new challenge, so it was really tough. Obviously disappointed, but I mean, the guys, they are amazing. Casimir are in the final because they understood for the first time in this competition what customers want. John Ray and Peter dropped the frills, and they delivered. I think they're amazing. It's, it's, it's incredible. We've got two little geniuses, but my God, can they cook. Fucking impressive.